breaking news, though, right now on the Mueller probe into Russian election interference is new clues as to where they are headed. The special counsel probe did begin questioning whether President Trump obstructed justice since he allegedly pressed his own FBI director to back off. He asked him to famously drop an investigation of Trump's own aide, Mike Flynn, who later pled guilty, and then he fired that FBI director, James Comey, with, quote, Russia on his mind. We know those questions of obstruction animated this probe from the start. They led to Mueller's appointment. They've occupied Mueller's focus. So that makes this breaking time story tonight so troubling for the White House. Trump spoke to witnesses about matters they discussed with special counsel. The Times reporting Mueller has learned of two conversations in recent months in which Trump asked key witnesses about matters they discussed with investigators, according to three people familiar with the encounters. It's not just talking to witnesses either. This involves the efforts to fire Mueller himself. Now consider the two crucial tracks in the story. First, why this president would be talking to witnesses in the Mueller probe and why he thinks that's a good idea. Now, is it because the president just doesn't care about the advice from his own attorneys not to do this kind of thing? Does he think there's no risk? He can outsmart one more problem. Does he think the risk is real, but it's somehow worth it? Or is this, like some other stories, something smaller? Is it just a lack of impulse control? Talking to witnesses in this case is dumb. It's inappropriate. Alone, that talking's not a crime. That would require something more, like asking witnesses to lie for you. That's what hurt Richard Nixon. But to see just how serious this report is, take this brand new reaction tonight, moments after the story broke from a high-ranking DOJ official known for his measured legal analysis, Neil Kotchal, who argued before the Supreme Court on behalf of the United States as acting Solicitor General. It looks so bad. And basically, you've got Donald Trump acting like a two-bit criminal here um, and saying to witnesses like Priebus, hey, what did you say? You know, were you nice to me? And so on. That is horrible. You know, I, I, I'm a defense lawyer. I love a challenge. You know, I represented bin Laden's driver. Um, and let me tell you, bin Laden's driver acted with far more integrity at every stage in the investigation than Donald Trump has so far. And this is just the published report of what we know. Worse than Osama bin Laden's driver. I, I can tell you, we don't usually hear Mr. Kajal speak that way about a president, even a president he vehemently disagrees with. So that is the witness piece and the headline in the Times tonight. Legally, though, the second track could actually be worse for Trump, and it builds on an incident the Times also broke on January 25th that this president, under investigation in part for firing his FBI director, also tried to get the special counsel investigating him fired, and then his White House counsel threatened to quit, which created the prospect of a Saturday night massacre, and then, reportedly, Trump backed off because that man, counsel Don McGahn, quote, threatened to resign rather than carry out the directive to fire Mueller. The Times reporting Mueller learned about the episode in recent months as his investigators interviewed current and former senior White House officials into his inquiry about whether the president obstructed justice. In this new reporting tonight, the Times says, not only with Mueller being told about the president's order to fire him, we, we know some of that, it also says something important, that Mueller knew exactly what was happening inside the White House after this January story appeared. Look at this, the president told an aide that the White House counsel, Don McGahn, should issue a statement denying the New York Times article in January. The article said McGahn told investigators that the president once asked him to fire the special counsel, Robert Mueller III. And according to three sources now tonight, McGahn never released a statement, later had to remind the president. He had indeed asked McGahn to see that Mr. Mueller was dismissed. Hold up. Quote, had to remind the president. Those are five ominous words for Donald Trump tonight. They suggest that McGahn had to resist Trump's version of events, this false account where Trump denies trying to get Mueller fired. If Trump is saying that false statement in the hopes that Don McGahn, his lawyer, would join him in it when he talks to Mueller, would lie to Mueller, well, yes, that would be a kind of statement to a witness that could be the element of a crime, which lawyer Don McGahn knows. So those are ominous words. Now, the fact that tonight we know they're in the New York Times, those words, is even more critical because it suggests 
someone or someone close to McGahn or someone sympathetic to him or McGahn himself wants to be on the record in public tonight about this little memory game, you know, where uh, we all remember the time the president tried to get his investigator fired while under investigation for obstructing justice. And if this is what is leaking out from Don McGahn, what else is he telling Mueller about Donald Trump in private? Joining me now is Michael Schmidt, one of the New York Times reporters who broke this story. Uh, thank you for joining me. What can you say about your understanding of why this is coming out now and the kind of legal peril it might pose for anyone at the White House? This incident, these incidents were things that concerned folks when they learned about it, people that were close to the investigation, and they believed that Mueller needed to know about it because there was a perception that this could be some kind of witness tampering. It's not that they thought in and of itself that it was witness tampering, but it gave off this view, this look, where if Mueller had found out about it and it had not been disclosed, it would be problematic and it would raise questions of obstruction or of, of many different matters. So the lawyers pushed ahead and this information got, got to Mueller. Is it fair to boil down what you're saying to the idea that Donald Trump's behavior here was so reckless or legally dangerous that people on his own legal team or sympathetic to those people felt a duty to self-report this to the special counsel? Well, one of the central, most basic things of investigations is that those under investigation should not try and talk to witnesses just because it, it just gets into a very, very difficult area. There are lawyers that can talk to other lawyers about it. The other thing is that they should also not talk to law enforcement people. And what struck people about this is that the president had had such a bad consequence come out of the time he did this last February, when Book Comey says he asked him one-on-one -on -one to end the Flynn investigation. When that came out, it led to Mueller being appointed and is now this thing that has put this dark cloud over the president. So for the president, even as this investigation is intensifying, he was going against the advice of his lawyers and engaging with these witnesses about matters that, that he knew had come up in front of Mueller. Yeah, and I, your, your piece is significant and your headline is arresting, uh, and I don't want to get into copy editing your headline, but I wonder if you could weigh in on the fact that the, the firing of Mueller part of this uh, seems even bigger than the witness part. Uh, because your paper and your, you and other reporters have documented how basically I'm looking at the timeline that there was the alleged attempt to fire Mueller in June 2017, as you've reported, and then you have Don McGahn speaking as a witness to the special counsel in November, and then you have the January report of the effort to fire Mueller. If Donald Trump was, as you report tonight, trying to get Don McGahn to publicly lie about the firing of Mueller, isn't that a legal problem as well? I guess it could be. I think that the president was very upset with the report, simply just the fact that this was out there. And he thought it was wrong and basically went to Rob Porter at the time and said, look, we've got to, you know, we've got to get a statement out there from McGahn, and if he didn't want to do this, we would get rid of him. And the president was very agitated about it and pushed for it, but then eventually had a confrontation with McGahn about it. And McGahn had to say to him, look, this is what happened. And the president said he didn't recall it that way. And they discussed the fact that McGahn had not directly told the president he was going to quit at the time in June. McGahn said that he had told other White House officials about it. And then the conversation moved on to other matters. Uh, and, and briefly, any further context on why McGahn would be telling that to other officials but not the president? What, what happened in June was the president had told McGahn to call Rod Rosenstein, the deputy attorney general who was overseeing Mueller, and tell him that Mueller had these series of conflicts and had to go. The president pushed McGahn to do this over the span of a few days, and eventually McGahn got fed up. He knew this was something he didn't want to do, and he told the folks around him that he was going to quit. The, around that time, the president backed down and stopped pushing him to call Rosenstein, right. and McGahn stayed on. 
McGahn didn't want to do it or perhaps also felt legally he could not do it. Uh, Michael Schmidt from The New York Times with the big story. Thank you. Thanks for having me.